welcome back to my channel. This month is actually my 45th monthly painting series and I, I must admit that having done so many of them um, you do wonder if you're ever going to run out of ideas of what to paint next. But actually that's not something to worry too much about I've realized after many many months of doing this is that you do always manage to think of something and inspiration comes from the tiniest things this month that actually came from a new art supply and it doesn't have to be something you know dramatically exciting and totally different this was just a different colour that I'd had my eye on for a while uh, and that colour is Lavender by Daniel Smith. So once I'd got myself a tube of this new lavender paint that I had been after for a while, I had to come up with something that I could paint with it. And of course, being awfully clever, I came up with a lavender series. Painting fields of beautiful lavender flowers seemed like a marvellously good idea and something I couldn't wait to get stuck into. But then I started to worry a little bit that um, perhaps I wasn't trying hard enough and that I should be coming up with something a little bit more um, original and interesting than lavender fields. And in the end I concluded that some of our old favourite subjects, uh, the things that artists have been painting over and over again for uh, centuries uh, are favourites for a reason. You know, these beautiful things are still in our world and they're still marvellous things to paint. So I, I think that sometimes when we doubt our choices, even choosing what to paint, sometimes that's just uh, our fear talking there. It's a kind of a way of procrastinating yourself out of getting started with the actual painting, which is odd, I know, because we really want to paint, um, but somehow making those first few marks uh, on the bank on the blank page can be uh, harder than we perhaps uh, realize. Choosing lavender for my series this month has actually given me quite a lot of scope for painting more colors than perhaps I thought I might have got a chance to because in my head I was thinking mostly of that the lovely lavender color that got me going this month in the first place and that's the color you can see in the sky in the top left hand corner of the painting there. A very soft um, but very bluish pale color. But once I started looking for um, inspiring references to work from, I came across a lot of lavender fields that tend more towards the pink. So that helped me to get out one of my other old favourites that I don't seem able to paint a painting without these days, which is a colour called Brilliant Red Violet. Uh, and that's the pinky colour that I've put in the flowers uh, and, well, pretty much everywhere in the water and in the sky. And it's a colour that goes down quite violet and then as it dries and the more dilute it is, the pinker it seems to be. So um, this picture is more of the uh, pinker tones of lavender out of my series but there are um, quite a few that I have done that have tended more towards the blue. So that uh, the blue-green variety. So that's given me quite a lot of... Um, variation even within uh, one series that had one fairly uh, limited subject. And uh, you can see me painting in some of the, the land there um, and those purpley blues are very good for that because the cooler colours, so the more blue colours, recede into the distance. And you've probably just seen me put in a big blob of that colour I love so much. That's the brilliant red-violet, quite concentrated. I wouldn't recommend that. I, I, I didn't, wasn't very happy I had done that after I had po popped it in there because it's a lot warmer than I think you would ordinarily want for a row of distant mountains because the warmer colours are going to kind of jump forward towards you in the painting and the cooler colours will recede and that's really what you want of those distant mountains. So I then spent a good bit of time trying to fix that. I let it dry a bit and I put some uh, a darker colour, I think that's moon glow, that I put over the top there to try and dull it down. 
Um, but in hindsight, I would, uh, if I was to paint the painting again, I would not have put that colour in the mountains. If you look at the, the mountain next to it, that looks like it's much further away, and that's really because it's paler and cooler. Because one of the other things that happens when you're trying to cover up that bright pink mountain uh, is that because watercolour is transparent, it's ending up getting darker and darker. So you're not going to get a lighter colour, you're going to get a darker colour, and that's also going to uh, pull the mountain towards us. And then you can see, now that I've started um, concerning myself with those mountains, that I'm pondering whether this whole picture would look better with an extra mountain. So I did some imaginary drawing there with my finger and then with the back of the paintbrush and now I've decided yes there should be another mountain in there and I'm giving myself a, a little pencil guideline. You can't really see that because I don't want it to be standing out but I can see it when I'm painting it. Uh, and this is a another thing that I wouldn't necessarily recommend. Typically when you're painting with watercolour you would start with the most distant mountain first. So I would, if I had uh, planned this out from the beginning, I would have painted that mountain first so that I could put the darker one um, that's in front of it on top. That would have been the more traditional and probably easier way to go about it. But it's also a chance to show you that um, you can still enjoy your watercolour painting even if you are breaking some of the purest's rules there. I don't think it is true that watercolour is so unforgiving that you can't make mistakes. Of course you can, it's part of how you learn. And one of the things I've been doing this month is taping my paper to the board. It's not because I want to stretch it, it's because I rather love this clean white border. And it's the most satisfying thing you can do, is pulling off that green tape. Doesn't it look so much better with a white border? Thanks for watching!